Praise God. Amen. I appreciate song service. I appreciate the way that I've been drawn to the cross. Amen. To the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amazing this morning. Amazing. Amen. The young people are dismissed to George Church this morning. Turn up in your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter number 5. Mark, chapter number 5. things, if I could first draw our attention to the fact that Jesus is coming again. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming again. And I know that there are bookshelves that have ample space of folks who have written books about the coming of the Lord. And, uh, 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 and, I, and I understand that it almost plants all that stuff in a realm where we are in the sci-fi, where there's wizards and uh, uh, where there's aliens and witches and sorcerers. You know, all that kind of seems to kind of be lumped together. But I, I need to tell you from the Word of God that when we look at the truth of the return of the Lord, amen, it is truth. It's out of the realm of fantasy and out of, out of the realm of sci-fi. And I know that there's been many people who have, have projected when things were going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be an old fellow now. I graduated in 1988, and so uh, I remember a book that was written, 88 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming in 88. Do you remember that? You know, that book was written, and then you hear her about Y2K and uh, how that, uh, 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 you know, at the turn of the century, things were going to happen. And uh, so all kinds of uh, things uh, have been projected about this, and it hasn't come true. But nonetheless, the authority of God's Word tells us that there is going to be a catching away. When we look at that, we find that, 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 that the Greek word for the Hebrew catching away becomes rapture. And so uh, 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 there's going to come a time, Sister Susan, where in a Walmart, there are going to be some carts that just begin to be pushed against the wall or throughout the parking lot because no one is any longer there pushing them. Amen. Because the rapture has taken place. And uh, there's going to be delivery trucks that, that are going to veer off the side of the road because the driver is no longer there. And so it's going to happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. We think everything needs to be lined up for, for the coming of Christ. Uh, that's another seven years. Amen. When Christ comes back. But when the rapture happens, he's going to meet us in the sky. Amen. So it is going to happen. Uh, it, it's been around. Job talked about it. He said, "He said, uh, I know that my Redeemer lives. And uh, in the olden days, they would take bones of folks and they would put them in the grave because they felt like it was necessary to have all the bones there so that they would come back to life again. They would never cremate. So that sometimes I, that stigma still lies around. God doesn't need all the bones together in one place Amen. to bring the saints of God back. Amen. Amen. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what our mind could even imagine. So when the trump sounds and Christ comes back and meets us in the air, amen, it, it doesn't matter if you've been at sea and, and a couple of different sharks ate you up, God's going to bring you back. Amen. Amen. Doesn't matter if your bones are uh, 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 separated on different parts of the world, God's going to bring it back because God's able. Amen. And so that should challenge us and encourage us to know that Jesus is coming again. 
Amen. He's coming again. And let me tell you, if you like celebrating Christmas, the next celebration of His coming is even better. Amen. 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 When He comes back for the saints of God. He said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there ye may be also. He said, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself, that where he is, there we may be also. Sister Dan, we're going to be with him. Amen. So that's the encouraging thing this morning, to know that he is coming back. Amen. The church, we can't forget about that. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a wise tale. Wise tale. It's, it's the truth of the authority of God's Word that He is coming back and we need to be ready. Amen. That's why we come to church. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's, that's, that's why that we, 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 we wait, amen, for Him to come. Amen. We need these moments of nudges, amen, to re remind us that He is coming back again. He said in Revelation, he said, even so, I come quickly. He's coming like a thief in the night. He is going to be the best at it. And right. getting there and getting the goods out. He's going to come and he's going to take us like a thief in the night. So if we know the Lord is coming, how much more should it encourage us to press in to Him? Thank God. Do you believe He's coming back? Yeah. Amen. Amen. If we believe He's coming back, then we should be pressing in to Him more than ever, ever before. If we know something's going to happen, Amen, we press in. Why is it that kids can't sleep on Christmas night? Any of you ever had that problem that you can't fall asleep or you wake up early on Christmas? Any of you ever had that problem? Why is that? Because you anticipated Christmas was coming. How many of you have already went out and spent your tax return before it was even deposited in your checking account? Because you know what? You anticipated it coming back. Maybe some of you are already thinking about that new remodel in your house or that new vehicle or that new outfit or whatever it may be or getting that bill paid off because you anticipated that tax return coming back. Why is it that folks will, when they hear their loved one being sick and only hours, they'll, 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 they'll pay the highest price of a ticket, they fly there, they'll get there, they'll get it closer around the bit because they know time's limited. When we know things are going to happen, it changes us. How many of you are feeling better about the weather this weekend? I'm feeling a lot better than I did in January. Because I know that it's coming. Because it changes us. If we really believe that Jesus is coming back again, it will change us. It reminds me of a woman in Mark chapter number 5. Verse number 25, the Bible says, And there was a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians. I know you've heard this preached on many, many times before. I've preached on it. You've heard other preachers preach on it. But go with me. And it spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. And when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, his garment, if I may touch but his garment, she said, I shall be whole. Amen, I shall be whole. I want to speak for just a few moments on desperate for God. Amen. Desperate for God. Have you ever been desperate for something before? I mean, you wanted it. And I'm going to even go beyond the want. There's a lot of things that, that folks will say, I, I need, but they really just want. And so there's a distinguishing factor between want and need. Amen. 
We need to be desperate for God. We need God in our lives. Our everyday life, every day. We need Him fresh and new. Amen. Uh, things that, that, that we can be desperate for in our life. Amen. Desperate. And so, uh, when we look at this woman, she was very desperate. And uh, uh, David, he said in Psalms, he said he watched some, some gazelle, he watched some deer, and they would be hunted down. And as they were running, he said, uh, God, I, I, my, my soul longs for you as the heart pants after the water broke. And, and just the way that, 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 that gazelle needs some water, it needs something to drink. God, so do I long for you. I'm desperate for you. When's the last time you felt that way in your life? That you've been desperate for God, as desperate as you are for a drink of water. Uh, just like that, that, that deer that's being hunted. Uh, it longs for something to quench its thirst. David said, that's the way I long for you, God. I'm desperate for you. Do you remember when Hannah had went to the temple in the Old Testament and she was longing for a child? She was barren. She dealt with infertility. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, she was uh, in a society where uh, her husband was married to more than one woman and the other woman had children and provoked her. And her heart broke because she had this barrenness in her life. And so she went and she cried before God. She was desperate. I mean, uh, she, she hardly spoke words. Her lips moved. Her, her heart was broken. Sister Janice, she went before God. She was desperate. There was a deep place of her that was calling out for God. When is it that that deep place in you has last called out for God? God, I need you. Thinking about Jacob as he wrestled with with, with the angel of the Lord. And he said, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. When's the last time that you've wrestled with God until you said, God, I really need this and I'm not letting go till I see this answer? What about the Shunammite woman? She really hardly asked God for anything. She took care of the prophet. The prophet had come by her house. We know the story that she didn't have a child and, and she has a son. And one day the son was out with his dad working in the field and he came in complaining about his head and they laid him up on his bed and he died. And, and she went to where the prophet was. She was desperate for God. I mean, I don't even want to imagine that scenario in my own personal life. I, you know, how can you hardly but think about that story without having some type of counter-transference where, where you sense that yourself, the, the pain of this parent. But she was desperate for God in the middle of her need. And so when's the last time that we have really been desperate for God to work and move in our life? Or do we try to do things with our own adequacy? Or do we just fall up in the corner and we're painted to the corner and we say, I'm just stuck here? We often are on those sides of the spectrum where we think that we can do it in our own ability or else we think that it's useless and helpless. I might as well just give up. But I believe that we forget the most important thing is that we need to be desperate for God in the middle of our situations for Him to work and move. And so here it is. I, I believe this, that when a man or a woman gets desperate for God, you better just stand clear. You better get out of their way because they are going to see God work and move in their situation regardless. And so here it is. A woman who is desperate for God. She reaches out to God. That desperate, that word in itself means this. It means one who has lost hope. So if you lose hope, you get desperate to find hope. Trust me. I see that almost on a daily basis. Folks who are desperate for anything because there's no hope. And they'll try any remedy. Amen. It's time that we find ourselves in a position 
where we realize that our strength can't do it and that we are going to get up and we're going to find some hope and hope is only found in Jesus Christ. My hope is built in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. He is our hope. And so the, uh, here, here it is. That, that, that she, she's longing. She's wanting. Socrates, that great philosopher, had a young boy came to him and said, I want wisdom. I want wisdom. So he took him to a body of water and they begin to wait up out of the water. And, and the young boy didn't understand why Socrates was taken there. And as they got out there to a certain level, Socrates grabbed the boy and he held him under the water and he kept holding him under the water. Hold him, hold him, hold him, hold him. Until finally the boy's fighting and he gets up and he walked back to ground. And the young boy said, why did you do that for to me? He said, tell me, what was the one thing you wanted when I was holding you under the water? I wanted to breathe. And Socrates said back to that young man, he said, you will get wisdom when you desire wisdom as much as you desire the breath when you are under the water. You know when we'll see God move? When we get desperate to see God move. We have lived in this Western world where we have all the resources we want and we think we deserve more. Amen. So and, and in our economy, amen, we've had very little room for God because we've been able to do it ourselves. But in God's economy, he says, you're wretched and you're poor. Why don't you get desperate for me so that you can see the great riches of things that I can give to you? I'm talking about getting uh, 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 desperate for God. So we look at this young lady. In fact, tradition gives her a name. Her name is Veronica. And so Veronica, by tradition, is this young woman uh, who has suffered with uh, 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 being anemic. At uh, 12 years, she has suffer, suffered. And so uh, uh, she uh, uh, looks and she sees that there is a crowd. But she realizes that she needs God. She realized that she was weak physically, but God can make her whole. Amen. So she's, she's weak physically. Her relationships have probably suffered because of that. She couldn't go to the temple because of her bleeding disorder, so she had no type of spiritual care given to her. I mean, she's in a bad place, Brother David. Uh, her family, her friends, no spiritual care. She, she, she can't participate in worship. Uh, she's an outcast. She's unclean because of her condition. She's in bad shape. What do you do when you're in bad shape? I'll tell you what you do. You get that desperate for God. Maybe there's some folks here that you're in bad shape. Maybe some of you are in bad shape spiritually. It's time to get desperate for God. Maybe some of you are in bad shape physically. There's needs in your body that you need God to meet. <coughs> Maybe some of you are in bad shape emotionally because of things in your life or things not going well or going as you expected. Whatever the relationships that you have. Uh, the Bible says that this woman had suffered much at the hands of the physician. And so uh, here she is, 12 years and different cures, but nothing happens. And she spends all of her money. Uh, talk about some hiccups in medicine. This is definitely a woman who shows that. Uh, you, you, can, you can read about my practices, things going wrong in medicine all day long, but some things have gone wrong, and maybe things necessarily didn't go wrong on the doctor's part. They just didn't have the technology or the solution to help her. So she suffered. And so we find that desperate faith hears what has not been heard before. This little woman, she lives in an area, a region, 
where Jesus has been born and raised. And maybe she's heard Sister Jan about him uh, uh, being around uh, Capernaum, Galilee. Maybe she heard about him who, who was born and the star shone bright and the, the, the wise men come almost like a king, but she never really bought into it, never cared at all about it, didn't understand. Maybe she heard about him doing miracles, but maybe she just passed it off and, and she, 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 she uh, has been part of it, but never got involved. But she's growing sick, and so all of a sudden, Maybe she says, what if this thing is real? Amen. What if all the tales are really real and it's true? Brother David, you said this morning, the one thing that showed you if you ever had doubt about salvation was seeing the salvation experience of your brother. Maybe there's some folks in here where you say, I doubt healing. Amen. Maybe it's time that you put the doubt aside and say, but I'm going to trust God with this. Amen. I'm going to trust God. I, I know about it, but I've never experienced it. Maybe some of you have, have issues that, that are beyond resolve. Maybe it's time that you say, I've heard that God can work in this situation, but there's always been the big boulder of doubt right in the way. Maybe today is the day that you say, I'm desperate enough to allow doubt to go. And I'm going to grab hold of God's Word and what I heard. And I'm going to trust God. Was it like Veronica was on the other side of the world from Jesus? It wasn't even like she was a city away. She was right where Jesus was and things were happening. But today, she chooses faith over fear. She chooses trust over doubt. She chooses to believe today. And so here she goes and, and, and she has this desperate faith that has never been heard of before in her life and she begins to act upon it. Amen. When people begin to get desperate enough, amen, they begin to question, what if this is real? God does save marriage. God does heal bodies. God does restore relationships. God does uh, save those who seem to be the worst of the outcasts. God is able to do it. Amen. I sat with a lady this week and she was uh, I said to her, can you tell me what God's been doing in your life? She said, let me tell you about my son who's 47. She said he, he, he had a baby with a, a lady who was a drug addict like him. He'd been living on the streets and, and they were both drug addicts. But, but, but he had this baby and, and mom went off on, on a tangent and he decided that he was going to go back to church with this baby. She said he had other children that, that, that were his and he was never really involved in it. But this baby that changed his life and he got back in church and now he's working a job. Job. She said, he had stole things from the house to support his drug habits. She said, but finally God answered my prayer and he got saved and he's living for God. 47 years old, a uh, drug addict, God can change lives when people get desperate enough. So here it is. She's desperate. Amen. Her time worn beliefs desperation in her heart. She's opened up her mind and her heart to God. Amen. She's trusting Him like she never has before. Amen. I don't even believe this woman got all emotional. Amen. I believe she was wore out. It's not even about the emotion. It's about the desperation. God, I'm desperate. I'm going to give another word for, to desperation. How about if we call it passionate? I think we can relate to that word. Getting so passionate for God. Hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost here. Amen. You want God to change your life? Why don't you get passionate for Him more than anything else? Amen. He can break those fetters that seem to have you bound. God can break them if you will get passionate and He will change your life. Life. So here the passion begins to rise up in this, this woman. Amen. I, I believe this. I see her coming and I don't believe she's begging God. Please, God, please. I don't see that picture at all. 
I see a woman who is so passionate, she doesn't need to beg God. She reaches out in faith and knows that I'm passionate and I have faith that God can touch me. Amen. If you want to beg God, if that's your realm, amen, maybe that works for you. Amen. But I don't necessarily think that's always the route to go. I think it's the, the, the desperation and the trust as we reach out to God with everything that's within us. God, I'm trusting you with this. Amen. Amen. Young people in your lives, why don't you trust God with your life? I don't care what your history is. God can change that history if you will get desperate enough to reach out and grab hold of Him. Amen, moms and dads. I don't care what your family structure is like or what it has been. If we will get desperate enough for God to work and move, He can change it. Amen. Your health, your emotions, your mental well-being, your spiritual well-being most of all. Desperate for God. I don't know what her religious traditions was. Maybe it was. Obviously, she really shouldn't have been out among the crowd uh, because of religious tradition. She shouldn't have done a lot of things. But, but, but she chose to go beyond religious traditions. Now, there are some things religiously that are my traditions that I love and I respect. But if they get in the way of me getting a hold of God, the tradition's got to go out the window. I'm going to touch God. I'm going to get a hold of him. It's interesting that we see that desperation will do a lot. The desperate faith receives what it has never received before. She pressed her way through the crowd. The crowds are following Jesus, but she didn't care. Some people may say, well, God will heal you if God wants to heal you. I don't believe that. I believe that our prayer changes Amen. God. You ever hear about a man named Hezekiah? He had many more years of life added to him because of praying. Do you ever hear about a man named Jairus? whose daughter was so sick and nigh unto death that she died, but Jesus brought her back. It changed things. Did you ever hear about the Syrophoenician woman who brought her daughter to God and it changed things? I'm telling you, prayer changes things. Don't just assume that if God wants to do it, He will do it. God is looking for the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man or a woman because it avails much before Him and it changes the plan of the heart of God. Reaching out. You may say, well, the days of miracles are over. I will never, ever, 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 ever buy into that. I've seen too many miracles. I sat with a woman weeks ago who the doctors had given her just days to live, but she felt confident. She said, I can't explain it, but the peace of God was just over me, and I knew what they were saying. I watched my doctors as they come in and cried and gave me the news and wiped tears from their eyes, but I didn't feel that way. If that's what dying is, she said, this must not be so bad. She said, but I had the peace of God. I can tell you what God has done. Weeks ago, I sat with a man as he shared with me that he only had a 20% chance of survival going through surgery. And his family, though they knew that he was safe, said, should we tell him just in case he needs to make anything right with God? He said, but here I am, complete and whole. God does that. Don't tell me the days of miracles are over. God can do a miracle for you. God still delivers. God still saves. God still heals. I think the prerequisite is this, is that people have to get desperate for God. There has to be a passion to see God move and work in their life. 
So desperation, it moves beyond the mental realm. It becomes a place where, where we hear by faith and we reach out. Here's the, 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 the crowd that, that is round about her. Do you understand what's going on? They're headed to Jairus' daughter's house. Right? And Jairus, is, he's, he's, he's a ruler. Who is this little woman who's sick and been an outcast for 12 years compared to a ruler? But you know what? She didn't allow that to bother her. She did away with all the whispering. She did away with what anyone else was thinking and saying. And trust me, there was probably people that was just there for the show, people who was bored, people who didn't have faith, but yet she didn't allow that to affect her. Do you know what can change you this morning? Right? Right here in the service, you can you can say, well, I can tell brother so-and-so, or this person doesn't have faith. And what are they whispering? What does it matter? It's about you blocking out everybody else and saying, but today, but today, I'm going to meet with God. Amen. You may say, I feel like I'm not worthy. You know, you take that mentality, your desperation will never break through. But if you take the mentality of a little lady named Veronica, that it doesn't matter who I am, I'm going to press her. I'm going to reach out. I wondered this as I got ready for this message. I wondered, what is it, Brother David, about touching the hem of his garment? Where did she come up with that? I mean, was it some type of religious tradition that maybe she had heard of somewhere before along the line? Was it just something she imagined in her own mind if I could but touch? However it was, desperation got into it. See, maybe it had been something Brother Josh had never been done before. Kind of like the story of a man who was paralytic that his friends tore off the roof and let him down to Jesus. It had never been done before. But in desperation, anything to get into the presence of God. Sister Olive, if you'd come to the piano this morning, I just wondered this morning, will there be some folks that will say, I'm just weird. I'm weary of how it is and I'm not going to accept how it is. But I'm confident that God can move in this situation. For me this morning, to paint out a scenario, all of our scenarios are different. So I'm not going to do that. I couldn't do it adequately. But what I want to ask you is, are you tired of how your situation has affected you and your relationships? Are you tired of how it's affected you spiritually? This woman with issue of blood, she was tired of it. She couldn't even go to a place of worship. She couldn't have friends. She couldn't have the fellowship. It had destroyed. Are you tired of those situations? This morning, if you are, could I say, could you fuel the fire of a desperate passion. Don't say, I'm going to forget about what anyone else says or thinks. I'm going to forget about how long the walk to the altar may be. I'm going to forget about what it may look like and how it may sound with others round about me. And I'm just going to get desperate for God. What would it look like if we really believed Jesus was coming back? Would we be desperate for God to work and move so that when He comes, He will find faith and find us being faithful? This morning, with every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around, there's not a need. I wonder if you'd say, I'm tired of how this has been. If you ever talk to someone who's anemic, they'll tell me it feels like the wind is blown out of my sails. I just don't have any oomph anymore. 
Here's a woman severely anemic. She's broke. Her relationships are destroyed. She hasn't had any type of really even spiritual care because of her situation. But now she hears of Jesus coming by. And she says, I'm desperate enough to try him. I'm desperate enough to trust him. I don't care if there's others in the crowd who are bored. I don't care that there are others in the crowd who thinks I'm not good enough. I'm going to do what's never been done before. I'm just simply going to touch his heart. Because I believe by faith that he'll make me whole. And when she had touched his garment, he immediately stopped. And he said, who touched me? The disciples said, Jesus, there are many. He said, no, someone touched me in a different way. They touched me with a desperate faith. And she looked up and she said, Master, it is hot. He says, your faith has made you whole. Would there be someone that will say this morning, I'm desperate enough to end my faith that I'm going to walk away whole this morning. So here I come, Jesus. Here I come. The altars are open. Will there be some men and women with passionate faith, some young boys and some young girls with passionate faith that would say, here I come, God. I'm believing for you to change. Amen. The altars are open. Would you step out right now? Amen. There are folks who are coming. Would you join them? Amen. Would you come? Not worry about what anyone else thinks or says. But would you come and say, God, here I am. I'm coming passionate to see your work and move on my life. Let's get her in. Amen. Would you reach out this morning in faith? I feel the Holy Ghost. He's here. You don't have to beg. All you have to do is by faith reach out and ask. Would you ask him this morning? Let's get her in. Amen. Would everyone get her in? And reach out with faith to God.
It's just you and Him in the moment. Hallelujah. Reach out and touch His garment. Believe today by faith. Hallelujah.